So in the third lecture, I'm gonna, yeah. so I'm gonna show that uh, direct sum end of uh, regular rings are co-Macaulay. And we already showed that direct sum end of regular rings are, okay. So how are we gonna, how are we gonna do this? We're gonna sort of split the proof in, okay. So we know regular rings are strongly regular and we know direct sum end of strongly regular rings are strongly regular. So in particular, we know direct sum end of regular rings are strongly F regular. And so to show that direct sum end of regular rings are co-Macaulay, so one remains to show that this uh, strongly F regular rings are co-Macaulay. So this is the remaining thing that we wanted to uh, show. And in order to do that, we need some, okay, this is, if you are, okay, so let's just, so, um, so the first thing I want to show is that uh, the completion of a strongly F regular ring is still strongly F regular, okay? And to do that, I need to, you know, so, so far we, when we check some, some ring is strongly F regular, we uh, just, say we, we pick any C and then we track like one to F e lowers our C for some E, one to F e lowers our C splits. Um, so it will be really, really convenient if we can only track this splitting for one C. And indeed that, that's, that's indeed the case. And you have, but you have to pick this C sort of carefully, okay? So here's a theorem that I want to, uh, it's extremely useful. So uh, let R be an F finite ring of character P. Uh, so suppose there exists C, not the n minimal prime, uh, such that our local as C is strongly F regular. So, okay, for example, regular. Okay, so that is, you find some C such that after inverting C, the ring is regular, let's say. So then I claim that to check R is strongly F regular, you only need to split off that C. So then um, R is strongly F regular uh, if and only if uh, there exists E bigger than zero such that um, the map from R to F e lower star R, sending one to F e lower star C splits. Okay, so you see the theorem is okay. Of course, uh, the only if direction is trivial, right? Because I mean, uh, so if R is strong F regular, so then of course you know you. So if R is strong F regular, so then this should be holds for every C. For every C, you should be able to find an E. Uh, such that this map splits. So the interesting direction is the converse. So you only, to, to track R is strong F regular, you only need to track this one single C. You know, you can find this E large such that this is split. Okay, so let's sketch a proof of this. Um, okay, so let's give in the D, uh, not in any minimal prime of R. Okay, so then the image of D is not in minimal prime of R. So the image of D is not the any minimal prime of RC. And so our assumption is that RC is strongly F regular. So uh, since R local as C is strongly F regular, uh, there exists E zero uh, and the map phi in the harm set such that B of F E zero lower star D is equal to one inside RC, okay? And so now uh, I'm gonna use this trick again and again. So F E lower star R, uh, R is F finite. So F E lower star is a finite module. 
So the harm sort of uh, commutes. Okay, this is harm over RC. Maybe I should just say, right? So, um, so things. R is at finite. So we know that this harm RC at the lower star RC, RC. So this is just RC tensor harm at the lower star R back to R. Okay. So I'm using harm commutes with this uh, flat base change when the modules inside are finally generated. Okay. And so therefore, in particular, I have my phi, look, my phi is inside here. So phi is inside the left-hand side. And so in particular, we know uh, phi has to be come from the, the right-hand side. So um, this phi equals to this phi over c to the n for some n bigger than zero and some phi inside harm um, fe lowers than r to r. Okay, uh, right, and it follows that um, If you, if you apply this phi to this f e lower star d, oh, sorry, f e, oh, sorry, I, sorry, I forgot this e zero. Okay, so this is e zero. Right, because, sorry, sorry, this is e zero. Right, because I, I said there exists e zero such that, you know, phi inside harm E0, RC to RC is such that phi E0, uh, phi, this phi of uh, phi lower star E0 D equals to one. So, so this should be E0, this is E0. Um, so this is C to the N because after I, uh, uh, you know, if I divided by C to the N, I got, uh, uh, I, got uh, I got one inside RC, so this is, um, some part. So this is this is a C to the n. Okay. So uh, and so now. Okay. So so now basically the. I mean, I hope the idea is clear, right? So, uh, I take any d, uh, not in any minimal prime of r. So I want to split like this f e lower star d for for some large uh, for some large e. Okay. And so what I know by by this assumption that R C is strongly regular is that uh, I have an e zero such that phi of this f e zero, uh, f e zero lower star d is some part of c. So then basically what you left to do is just to left, what you left is to split this c to the n. That's the, that's the thing. But then that sort of, you can imagine that sort of coming from this assumption, you can, you can split off c, but you can iterate this such that you can also split off c to the n. That's the, the idea, okay? So let me just give the details. So uh, so next, well, it's, it's kind of technical to uh, write it, write down everything, but let me just try to do that. So, so next, uh, pick E1 bigger than zero, such that uh, this N is less than P to the, um, uh, E1 minus E, okay. Uh, sorry, I guess there's E1 minus E0. Okay, so such that the image um, of F E0 lower star C in F E1 lower star uh, R uh, is a multiple of F E1 lower star C to the N. Okay, so because 
uh, the image of this inside here is f e one lower star c to the p to the e one minus e zero and uh, c n is less than that, so that's a multiple of uh, this element. And so now things uh, r to uh, f e uh, zero lower star r. Sorry, this is ah sorry. I mean this is not e zero. This is I'm just this is the e. Okay, so since by our assumption that our assumption says there exists E such that this map sending one to F E low. So, so this E here is this E that I begin with. So there exists E such that R to F E lowers are R sending one to F E lowers are C splits. So I have this, uh, uh, I pick E1 very, very large such that N, so this N is less than this P to the E1 minus E. And I know this image is a multiple of F E one lower star C to the N. And so since this map sending one to F E lower star C splits, uh, it follows that the map from R to F E one lower star R sending one to F E one lower star C to the N. So this map splits. Okay, because you can just apply like F to the uh, E1 minus E lower star. So, and uh, you apply to that splitting, you have uh, R to F E, uh, let me just write it down. So uh, you have R to F, okay. So I have this map from R to F E lower star R. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply F <laughs> F E1 minus E lower star. So I have F E1 minus E lower star R. So here I have F E1 lower star R. Okay. And uh, so now, so this, this is one to uh, uh, F E lower star C. And this is one to, well, so this is F E1 lower star C to the P to the E1 minus E. And I'm assuming this is a, this is a multiple of uh, uh, this. Is, so this is a multiple of F E one. So 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 F E one lower star C to the n divides sort of F E one lower star C to the P uh, E one minus C. Okay. So this this is a multiple of F E one lower star C to the n. So if so if this map splits, so then the map from uh, the map goes from F E1 minus E lower star. So if this map splits, so then the map sending F E1 minus E lower star one to F E1 lower star C to the N. So this map also split, okay? So maybe you, you should really do all this as an exercise, but then I, so I'm claiming something uh, more. I'm saying the map from R to F E1 lower star R sending one to F E1 lower star C to the N splits. So what you do is that you compose with R here Right, and I will realize that this map always splits because R is F split. Because R is, you know, you have some maps sending like uh, one to F e lower star C splits. So in particular, the maps from R to F e lower star R sending one to F e lower star one splits. So R is always F split. So you can, so, uh, so this map splits and then this map always splits. So the composition splits. So that's how I got to this conclusion. It's actually a bit of work, so I, uh, you can refer to the notes for more details, but uh, the point is that you have to uh, increase your E to incorporate this, uh, this uh, C to the N. Okay. Uh, so then you, you so then, um, so then um, you pick a splitting theta. Um, that is F E one lower star R to R sending F E one lower star C to the N back to one. Uh, so then you check the map theta composed with F E one lower star phi. And that's gonna, 
go from F E1 plus E0 lower star R to R, right? And descending F E1 plus E0 lower star D to one. So again, uh, there are some details you have to work out. It's uh, perhaps the easiest thing is to just draw a diagram. Uh, but the idea is that uh, you first, uh, you first, you first, okay, I, I have two like E1 plus E0 lower star. So I view this at uh, FE0 lower star, and then I apply FE1 lower star. So you first send this FE0 lower star D to C to the N, and then you raise it to FE1 lower star, sending that C to the N to one. So this sort of like the composition of two maps. The first map sending, uh, you know, FE0 lower star D, or FE1 plus E0 lower star D to FE1 lower star C to the N. And then the second map sending FE1 lower star C to the N to one. Okay, so this is the composition of two maps. So basically you find this E1 plus E0 uh, that maps this element to one. So uh, you do this for every D, so you check this uh, splitting. Okay, so this is a, a technical result, but I, I hope at least the idea is clear. So right? you. You, you first use the assumption that RC is strongly F regular, you're sending any D to some power of C, and then you, you have to twinkle with the Frobenius power. You, you, you send that C to the end, uh, F some large Frobenius twist of C to the end back to, back to one, okay? So that's the idea, but there are some details you have to check. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so, and using this, we can prove, uh, so there's a corollary. This is the, this is the place that I'm gonna use this uh, theorem that I just said. So, um, so an F finite um, local ring, RMK, uh, say of Paris P is uh, strongly F regular if and only if the completion is uh, strongly afraid. Okay. Um, okay, so let's just prove this. So we may assume R is a domain. Um, well, actually, uh, let me just say a normal domain. Okay, because we already showed uh, strongly F regular local rings are domain and strongly F regular rings are always normal. So we have, um, we have this. Uh, so there's a fact now that I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of uh, skip. Um, uh, oh, I, I, I won't prove this. Uh, so the fact I'm gonna use is that um, there exists uh, a non-zero element C inside R such that R localized C and the completion of R localized C are both regular. Well, let's say at finite and regular. Okay, so it is always at finite because R is at finite, so the completion is also at finite. So localization of at finite rings are always at finite. So, uh, so they are at finite are automatic. Okay, and the point is that I can find some non-zero C such that both are uh, regular. And so this follows from the fact that uh, strongly at uh, sorry, it's followed from the fact that at finite rings are excellent. So, uh, in particular, the regular locals are open, so you can find some C. I mean, it's a domain, so generically it is regular, so you can find some non-zero elements such that our local is inverting that single element, uh, your ring is regular. And uh, this other fact, this uh, the completion of our local C is regular, but this also follows from the, uh, the excellent, uh, Excellent ring hypothesis. So, uh, you know, basically the fibers are all geometrically regular. So, if RC is regular, then the the, uh, the R completion localized C is also regular. Okay, but this fact, I mean, uses some uh, some result about uh, some non-trivial result about uh, affinite and excellent rings. So, which I'm not gonna uh, 
proof in this lecture. But anyway, uh, let's just grant this fact. I'm, I'm just telling you for f finite rings, uh, there exists some non-zero element for, I mean, this is actually true for any f finite domain, I think. So for any f finite domain, you can find a non-zero element such that inverting that element, uh, both R and the completion of R are regular. Okay, and so now the, you see the reason I, I have this is because now, now I want to invoke this uh, theorem that we just proved. So we want to show R is strongly F regular if and only if the completion of R is strongly F regular. So now uh, to check they are strongly F regular, I only need to check the splitting for that, for this little C that I find here, because that inverting that is F finite and regular, so it's strongly F regular. So I, I only need to check the splitting for that C. Okay, so, and now, okay, so now, uh, the map, uh, uh, the R to FE lower star R sending one to FE lower star C um, splits uh, if and only if uh, the harm set is uh, surjective, if and only if the induced map Palm R, F E lower star R, R. So, okay, let me just write this as multiplication by F to the C map to R. I harm, basically, I, I just I just harm this map back to R. I have this, this is surjective. Okay, but now everything is at finite. So to check this map is surjective that, you know, you can pass through the completion. I guess this is an exercise, but let me just, just just, just state the idea here. Um, this is equivalent to um, this harm set um, R hat, I feel lowest than R hat. Uh, well, technically I should write, right? So I feel lowest than R tensor R hat R hat uh, to R hat. This is still the induced by sending one to uh, F lower star C um, is surjective, but this is isomorphic to harm F lower star R hat R hat. Again, this is because I find it, right? Because this is a finite generator as an R module. So tensor with the completion is just the same as just, I complete that module. But it's an easy exercise to see that F e lower star R completed is equal to F e lower star R the completion of R. So that's, that's the same, okay? Uh, but then this is, but then this is uh, the later, the latter is equivalent to like R hat to F e lower star R hat, sending one to F e lower star C split. Okay, and so now uh, let me just say we are done by the theorem. Okay, so more precisely, uh, the theorem tells us so. This theorem tells us since we have this C such that R C and R hat C are F finite and regular, in particular, af after you localize the C, both rings are strongly F regular. So the theorem tells us to check R is uh, to check R is strongly F regular, or respectively to check R hat is strongly F regular. You only need to check there exists some E such that. R to F e lower star R sending one to F e lower star C is split. You only need to check it for one C, okay? And for that C, and now this analysis here tells you uh, to check that C, to check that single C, right? So uh, uh, like, you know, R to F e lo lower star R sending one to F e lower star C splits, if and only if R hat to F e lower star R hat sending one to F e lower star C splits. So to check that one is equivalent, and the uh, and you and the way you do this is because you know you look at the harm set. The harm is surjective, and the harm is surjective if and only if the it is surjective after you base change to uh, the completion. And so that's that's how you do this. 
So it is, maybe let me just comment. So, so the subtlety here is that, okay, at the first glance, you can do this analysis for every C, not just this, you know, particular C. You can do this for every C inside R. But then the subtlety is that, you know, you don't, I mean, in, in, in the completion of R, in priority, at least, at the completion of R, you, you, have, you have many more elements that you have to check if it's splitting, right? Because there are, mu there are much more elements in the completion than in the ring itself. So uh, to check R hat is strong enough regular, you have to check a lot of like F lower C C where C may not come in from R. And this argument tells you like, you know, by the theorem, uh, and this fact that I said here, you only need to check it for one C and that, and this is important that C is actually coming from R. And so then this way, you know, you, you, you easily prove that it's, uh, you know, strongly F regular of R and R hat are equivalent. Okay. Is it okay? Any, any questions? Okay, so if no questions, so we're almost done. So, uh, okay, so we, okay, so we want to, <laughs> we want to show strongly F regular rings are co-macaulic. So that is the, the last missing piece. And so far I told you like, you know, uh, strongly F regular rings can pass to the localization and, and then further pass to the completion. And so now, so basically, uh, so now to, the question is that to show uh, strongly F regular rings are co-macaulic, you can assume it is local and complete, right? So that's that's why we need this this reduction. And so the next, uh, I'm gonna state a well-known lemma. Okay, so this is independent of the characteristic, independent of the characteristic P or strongly this F singularities. So this is a completely general fact. If you have a complete and equidimensional, for example, complete domain. Uh, local ring of dimension D and suppose it's uh, co-Macaulay on the puncture spectrum. Suppose RP is co-Macaulay for OP away from the not equal to the maximum ideal on the puncture spectrum, it is co-Macaulay. So then I came the local cohomology module of R has finite length for all for, for the lower uh, for uh, or i less than d. Okay, so I believe this is you should you should be able to know uh, you should know this before, but just for com to complete it, let me just give a short argument. So this follows from local duality. Um, so first of all. Uh, by Cohen's structure theorem, well, I'm assuming complete. Actually, not. I mean, I only need to assume it's a homomorphic image of a Gorenstein ring, I guess. But anyway, I let's just assume it's uh, complete. So it's Cohen's structure theorem is a so R equals to S mod I, where S is a complete regular local ring. Oops. Okay, and so now by local duality, uh, uh, the matless dual of the uh, local cohomology of R uh, is uh, the X module, uh, where N, I just, N is the dimension of S, okay? So now the point is that, uh, so this is a finely generated S module. So, so this you can, uh, we can uh, use, uh, uh, we can use this hypothesis, uh, RP is co-macaulay. But let's just, let me just, uh, okay, so now. This guy, if I localize it P, uh, this is X, SP, uh, minus. Okay, I'm I'm gonna use p to denote both the prime ideal of R and the prime in S that corresponds to this prime. So this is a little bit of notation. R p s p. Uh, so 
this is uh, x as p. Okay, let me just dimension of as p minus i minus the the dimension of r mod p. Oops, sorry, because I made a mistake. And so I guess here I'm using the um, um, I'm okay. So what am I using? I'm, so here, okay. So I guess everything is trivial. I'm using the this dimension of SP uh, plus the dimension of R mod P is this N because this is because S is regular, right? So P is a prime ideal of S, R mod P is just this S mod P. I'm, I'm abusing notation. I'm using this P both as a prime ideal of S and a prime ideal of R. So this is just S mod P. So I'm using the height of P plus the dimension of S mod P is the dimension of S, which is it. So this, so here I'm using nothing. Okay, I haven't used the equidimensional hypothesis, but now I'm gonna using it uh, right now. So now by uh, you use local duality over this SP, okay? Uh, so you have this X SP, the dimension of S, SP is still regular because of the localization of a, uh, complete regular local ring. So this is the irregular. So this one minus this I minus the dimension of R mod P, uh, R P S P. If I dualize this, this is duality over uh, S localized P. So this is isomorphic to the I minus the dimension R mod P. So this local cohomology. RP. Okay. I'm using local duality over SP. Well, it's not complete, but I'm, but it's fine because I'm, because I'm using the this, the the X dual to the local cohomology. I'm using that. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, since we assume R is equidimensional, uh, we have the dimension of R mod P plus the height of P or dimension of R locus as P, this is D for every, for every P. Uh, so hence, if I less than D, which is, this is the dimension of R, right? Uh, then I minus the dimension of R mod P, this is gonna be strictly less than the dimension of R of that P, okay? Because this guy and this guy, they sum up to this dimension of the ring, okay? So uh, so basically, uh, okay, so basically the point is that one, so this number, if I is less than D, so this number is le strictly less than the dimension of R mod P, so this is zero because RP is co-macaulay. This is our assumption, okay? Uh, so thus, if, P is not the maximum ideal and I less than D, then HPRP, I minus dimension of R mod P of R local P, uh, this is zero. Since our assumption said RP is coma Okay, but this, so now if you trace everything back, right? So we know this is zero. So that means this guy dual, uh, it's zero. So that means this guy, well, this is all isomorphism, right? So, so this is zero, so this is zero, and so this is zero, right? So what you get, uh, so the discussion above, tells us that this, So on the puncture spectrum, this X module is zero. Okay, but that means this has finite net. So, so this is only supported at the maximum ideal and it's finally generated. So this has finite net, okay? But 
then Matlis do preserve the final length. So let's just say HMR R has finite. Okay, and this is this is what we wanted to prove. Okay, so for uh, I less than D, uh, well, for the all these lower local cohomology modules, they have uh, finite length. Okay, so I I believe this lemma should be uh, well known to most of you, but just in case, I just it follows. It's a standard argument uh, using uh, local duality. Okay, okay so. And finally, let's just let's just prove the main theorem. This is really the key. So, so let R M K be F finite and strongly F regular for Kerosene P. Uh, so then the conclusion I want to make, so then R is Kolmogorov. Okay, so let's just prove this. Um, all right, so as I said, we may assume R is a complete local domain. Okay, so first of all, it's a strongly F regular local ring, so by the uh, first lemma we proved on Monday, so R is a domain. And, well, sorry, I, sorry, sorry, I'm just, okay, so first of all, by this corollary, okay, uh, if R is strongly F regular, so then the completion is strongly F regular. So first of all, we may assume uh, R is complete, because, I mean, so R is strongly F regular, then the completion is, called, uh, the completion is as strongly F regular, and to track something is called Macaulay, we can check the completion, right? So the Cole-Macaulay property is uh, unaffected when you pass from R to the completion of R, okay? So you first of all, you may assume R is complete by right? this. And then it's it's a domain because it's strongly F regular and local, so it's a domain. So you may assume R is a complete local domain. So in particular, you are we are in a, right? So we are in a good stage of applying this lemma here, right? So this lemma applies for complete and uh, equidimensional Local ring, but we have a complete local domain. So in particular, it is it it, uh, it is equidimensional. So we we can assume uh, we are in this uh, you know we are in this setup. So we can assume uh, we can use this lemma. Sorry, just erase this. I didn't put numbers here, but this is lemma sixteen in the lecture notes. If you, you can. See. Okay, so. Um, All right, so the next, I think, okay, so I want to show R is called Macaulay and now I want to use induction. So, um, by induction on the dimension of R, we may assume, we may further assume that RP is called Macaulay for all p on the puncture spectrum, right? Because strongly f regulating passes to localization, so I know R p is Kolmogorov for every p, and by induction on dimension, uh, you know, I know it is. Uh, uh, I can assume R p is Kolmogorov for p on the puncture spectrum. Well. I guess the initial case is obvious because R is a domain, so or whatever R is normal, so in dimension. One, this is really a trivial statement, but anyway. Okay, uh, and uh, so now I use the above lemma. So by the lemma above, uh, we know that this uh, lower local cohomology modules, HMIR, has finite length for all i less than d. This is, I'm gonna use d to denote the dimension of r. Okay. 
So we want to show R is called Macaulay. Uh, we apply induction. We, we assume it's called Macaulay on the puncture spectrum. And now this, this very general lemma tell us uh, we may assume the, local, the lower local cohomology modules have finite length. Okay, so, so now since this has finite length, Um, for all i less than d, I certainly I can pick a non-zero uh, uh, there exists non-zero c, right? Such that c times h i minus r is zero. For all i less than d, All right? Because these are finite length modules, so they are the annihilators are sort of and and primary, right? And I just look at the intersection of you know a finitely many number of n primary ideals, so it's going to be non-zero. Okay, so uh, so this is you know uh, you can always uh, you can find the non-zero c such that c annihilates each one. Okay, actually you just pick an you can pick any element in the maximum ideal, some power of that gonna annihilate HMIR for, for each I, and then you just replace that element by that power. That power will do it, do the job. Okay, so this is there. There are various ways we can argue this, so this is easy. Okay, so and now I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, my goal is to show R is called Macaulay, and I want to use this C and the strongly, we haven't used this assumption yet other than just the induction process, right? So I, I want to use this strongly regular property uh, to split off this C for some large E and then use that to argue that these lower local cohomology modules has to be zero. So that's the idea, okay? So, okay, so now since R is uh, strongly F regular, um, there exists E bigger than zero uh, and an R linear map from F e lower than R to R uh, such that the, okay, so I have R to F e lower star R. This is multiplication by F e lower star C, F e lower star R. So this composition is the identity. Okay, so this is the, this is a natural for beings, is a natural map. And this is multiplication by this map. So this from here to here, from the first one to the third one is the map from sending one to F e lower star C. But I'm just writing down everything in detail. And this is a splitting. So which means this composition is that then. So we have a such a thing. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna apply, so now apply um, the i local cohomology functor, cohomology. Okay, so let's see what we get. We have H M I R maps to H M I, F E lower star R, F E lower star, this is multiplication. Again, this is a natural map. R to F E lower star R is the Frobenius map. So this is a natural, natural map. And uh, this is the multiplication by F E lower star C. And this is the map induced by the last F lower star R to C. Okay. Oops, sorry. This is H M I. Okay. And the composition is the identity. So this composition is the identity. Okay. But now uh, the way we pick C is just basically saying like this middle map. Um, uh, is the zero map because here I remember I can identify F e lower star R with R and right so let me just let me just say uh, so if I identify this F e lower star R with R so this guy is identified so identify F e lower star R with R so this thing is getting identified with with H well, let me just be careful. So here I'm identifying with R. So this 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 maximum ideal uh, is 
well, actually it's getting identified with M to the bracket P to the E, technically speaking, right? But well, I don't care because local cohomology doesn't see the, the you know, doesn't see the radical of the idea. So this one, if I'm, if I'm, if I identify at the lower star with R, this thing is just HMIR, this guy, once I do this identification, uh, so this guy is identified with HM lower R, R again, and this is the multiplication by C map. I'm just dropping all the at the lower star, right? And if you drop this, there's only one side of it is that the ideal downstairs should actually be replaced by the Fabinian's power, but actually it doesn't matter because we take local homology. Local homology doesn't see the difference uh, if, the, uh, if the ideal had the same absolute radical. okay? So this is a zero map. But that means uh, here, I also have the zero map. Okay, so what you get out of this diagram is that the identity map on HMIR factors to the zero map. Okay, but what does that mean? That means this is zero. Okay, so what follows is that, uh, the, okay, let me just say the identity on HMIR factors to the zero map. But that tells us HMIR is zero. I less than D, but that, that's exactly saying R is common card. So this is the proof that uh, strongly F regular rings are common card. And finally, let me just put in, putting everything together. Um, so if R to S, uh, is a map of rings of Karasu P uh, that splits. So IE, R is a direct sum map of S. Um, if S is regular, then R is called Macaulay. So let me just say, okay, so, so the, the very quick proof that I'm gonna sketch here needs to assume that both R and S are F finite. This is a pretty mild assumption, but let me just let me just quickly sketch the proof uh, to have the proof assuming this assumption. But I mean, but if you're assuming this, then this quarter is, as I said, is just, just basically followed from the older results we proved about uh, strong F regular rings. Okay, so, I mean, if you have this assumption, then uh, S is regular implies S is strongly F regular, but uh, strongly F regular member pass to the direct sum end if your rings are finite, so R is strongly F regular. Okay, uh, but the theorem we just proved right right here, uh, strong air regular rings are called Macaulay. Okay, so uh, so this is the way you 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 can get this color pretty pretty fast from the uh, theory of strong air regular rings. But of course, okay, so now there's a one you know annoying sort of assumption that you know we are assuming both rings are finite because we want to. Uh, we want to say like this because we only define strongly F regular rings in the F finite setting. Well, to do the general case, well, you can just you know develop a theory of strongly F regular rings beyond the F finite setting. There are actually some work, and this is a he have a definition using tight closure, I guess. And uh, recently, like this, um, Data and Smith, they also have some proposed some sort of. Uh, uh, definition of strongly F regular rings beyond the F finite setting. You can do that, but uh, you can also, I believe, that I, actually when I prepared this lecture, I saw like this thing, uh, this colliery at least, also shows up in uh, Neil Epstein's uh, lecture notes. You can also prove this using the colon capturing property of, um, uh, of tight closure. So that's another way to do this. But uh, I'm running out of time, but actually uh, in my lecture notes, uh, you can, you can pretty much use the techniques we prove like these. Okay, so this is a theorem 
This follows from the Kuhn's. And this is a theorem, just so, so Dirac Summon of Strong Equilibrium. And this is a theorem that we just proved. You can actually uh, just examine the proof more carefully. You can actually prove the more general statement by essentially by reducing yourself to a setup that uh, that both R and S are at finite. You can you can do that. I, I carry out the details uh, in the in the lecture notes, but uh, it's it's kind of a little bit technical, but it's not too difficult. So okay, let me just make a comment. So the general case just reduced to the I find it setting. You can easily uh, well, not I mean it requires a little bit of work, but you can uh, reduce to the F finite setting and then you basically run this argument and then you can prove the general case. But I'm gonna skip the details. Clearly the, uh, for, for me, I guess, or like for this lecture, uh, the affine case is the, main, uh, is the main case, okay? So, um, but that's the sketch of the proof that the um, direct sum and of uh, regular rings are, uh, are called Macaulay in characteristic P. But uh, finally, just a one final remark, uh, so the corollary holds uh, without assuming uh, R and S has characteristic P. So it also holds uh, the direct sum of regular rings are always called This is true in characteristic zero and also in mixed characteristic. Uh, so this is the characteristic zero is done by Hux of Unicky. Zero and the mixed characteristics, the mixed characteristic case uh, uh, is done in a paper of Heidman and myself. But it also follows, so all this follows uh, quickly, follows from from the existence of uh, so-called weekly functorial big coma Macaulay algebras. I'm not, I, I think this uh, maybe later on in this lecture series, some some people might talk about the weekly functorial big coma Macaulay algebra, at least in characteristic P, but this, this is, a, this is holds in arbitrary characteristic. Now this is due to Andre. So this is a remark I want to want to make. So I only prove this in character P, but uh, the the corollary also holds in arbitrary characteristic. Okay, so I think I will just uh, stop here. And uh, I mean, uh, sorry, I didn't. I'm, the notes contains a lot more than what I want to say, but uh, I mean, what I can say here. But anyway, so I will stop here. Thank you.